Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, we will contrast and compare the three major hypotheses concerning the origin of chordates. The first hypothesis is that chordates, and hence vertebrates, evolve from hemichordates. Hemi means half, so these creatures are essentially half chordates. Most of them are worm-like creatures, such as Scaphioglossus, the acorn worm, which features a large proboscis in the head-like region. Another group of hemichordates includes the genus Cephalodiscus, which filters out plankton using cilia and tentacles, living in colonies on the ocean floor. Hemichordates are thought to be closely related to a group of extinct animals called graptolites, which we discuss in invertebrate paleontology. Click here if you would like to learn more about graptolites. Hemichordates appear to have not much in common with chordates. They lack a notochord, they lack segmented muscles or myotomes along the body, they don't have eye spots or visual sensory organs like you find in amphioxus or sea squirt larvae. However, hemichordates do have a heart and circulatory system, and they exhibit the duodenum condition in the formation of the gut tube. Newer phylogenies based on molecular evidence supports a closer relationship between hemichordates with echinodermata. In fact, both groups are known to secrete calcium carbonate in the formation of hard parts. This grouping is called ambiocryonia. The second hypothesis concerns a very strange group of fossils called carpoids. These strange fossils were first discovered in the 1850s and are known from the Cambrian to Devonian strata. Paleontologists didn't know what these were. Because they exhibit a skeleton of calcium carbonate, they were thought to be uh, primitive echinoderms before echinoderms had developed into radiosymmetric animals like that found in starfish and sea lilies today. However, starting in the 1960s, a paleontologist named Richard P.S. Jeffries suggested that carpoids were in fact ancestral to chordates and grouped them together in a new group called calcochordates. Studies of trace fossils suggest that these weirdly shaped creatures lived on the muddy ocean floor and would use their strange like tail appendage to move through the mud, feeding on detritus. The presence of a long, movable tail suggested an affinity to early chordates. The fact that these carpoids had an external skeleton of calcium carbonate, however, suggested an affinity to echinoderms like starfish. The studies are looking at the genes that code for calcium carbonate skeletons and whether they are present in the common ancestor of all these groups, but became suppressed in chordates. If they were present but suppressed, then chordates may share an ancestry with these unusual fossils. The third hypothesis is one that appears to have the most support, a close relationship between chordates and eucordates, sea squirts, and the discovery that the larval forms exhibit a notochord, which is absorbed as the animal becomes sessile in adulthood suggesting based on this morphology that the two are closely related. All right, let's quickly compare and contrast the three hypotheses by looking at shared features. Notochords, the cartilaginous rod that supports the animal, are found in eucordates, larva, but not hemichordates. And it appears that carpoids may have had some support along their long tail-like appendages. We really don't know. 
Gills are found in hemichordates and believed to be present in carpoids, but are absent in eucordates. Muscle tissue is found in hemichordates, but it's unsegmented in the head. Muscles are thought to be in carpoid appendages and appear to be present along the larval tail of eucordates. Hemichordates and eucordates lack a skeleton, while carpoids exhibit an external skeleton made of calcium carbonate, which is not found in vertebrates. Both carpoids and eucordate larvae have a definitive tail, while the worm-like hemichordates lack a distinct tail separate from their body. We can now see how each of these groups share and differ from each other on these traits. All right, so now you can contrast and compare the three major hypotheses concerning the origin of chordates, the hemichordate, calcochordate, and eucordate hypotheses. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash can check out those links down in the descriptions.